Implementing and maintaining the security of your MySQL servers is a critical aspect of database administration. In this video, I'll explain how to recognize various features used to protect and secure your databases. We're going to take a look now at understanding security in MySQL, and uh, this can be one of the most demanding aspects of database administration. And it's really difficult to get a pretty good handle on all of the considerations that you need to take into account. When it comes to security, there's just so many things to consider. Uh, so we'll try to cover off, of course, some of the more common areas and some of the more necessary things that need to be considered. But uh, it's not just the MySQL database. It's not just the server. It's virtually everything within your environment. So you need to really try to figure out what are the factors that can affect security. Now, there's a number of different models out there in terms of approaching security. And you'll get a lot of variance there, but you really have to start in a lot of cases uh, at the front door of the building, uh, right up to the individual record in any given database. Uh, and then, of course, how the database is accessed. So there's just so many layers in between that it can be difficult. But with respect to just looking at the MySQL environment, uh, you do need to start at the installation, of course. When you install MySQL, you need to be aware what's the security of the installation. And some of the most notable things there are, of course, the person who did the installation, where it was installed, uh, and the credentials that they placed on the on the root accounts and things like that, of course, definitely need to be considered to make sure it was installed in the correct manner, in the correct place, with the correct credentials. Uh, security control within the database from that point, of course, once you start defining your databases, you need to be aware of all of the objects that users are going to be able to access and make sure that they've only got the appropriate permissions to access the appropriate objects. And that, again, can be a very demanding task. Your database can be significantly large. You might have a few databases. You might have hundreds of databases. So in any given environment, you need to be aware of all of the, the security measures that you can implement within a database. And then, of course, there's the overall network security of MySQL and the server on which it's running. Uh, so a lot of this maybe falls outside of the scope of just MySQL, but you do need to be aware of what kind of security implementations have been implemented at the network level. Things uh, such as just being able to connect to the network who can get a network connection? Are there visiting people that come into your environment that are able to connect? Uh, or do you have to be an authenticated user? Are you connecting wirelessly or with a wired connection? You know, there's different levels of security there. So, I mean, these are very general, very high level considerations, but you do need to try to take everything into account when uh, looking at the security of your environment. So again, some of the factors that uh, maybe are a little more specific to MySQL, uh, one of the most common ones, of course, is just simply having strong passwords. So with that, you need to make sure that you find a bit of a happy medium. Now, you can see the example here is exceptionally strong, and it simply means that it's very difficult to guess. Uh, obviously, somebody's not just going to try to guess that string of characters, but strong passwords in and of themselves should contain at least seven to eight characters in a random combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. In other words, it should not be something that is very familiar to you and more to the point, very familiar to others so that they might be able to guess what it is. But uh, if the password is too strong, such as this one here might be, uh, this might lead a user to write it down. Now, that in and of itself is not necessarily bad, but you need to make sure that it is that written down password is then kept secure because obviously if it's left at your workstation, uh, that's not gonna help anyone. So, so writing them down is not a bad thing because it actually does encourage the users to create stronger passwords because they know that even they themselves will not remember it. But you just need to make sure that it is then kept secure. 
Uh, adequate user role security clearly is one of the main considerations. Uh, and that, again, is just simply making sure that only the appropriate users are gaining access to the databases uh, and then only the appropriate objects within the database so that they don't have full access to everything in every instance of MySQL. Uh, and of course, the application itself, you know, users are running a front end application of some description, whether it be something installed on a desktop or a web based app, you need to be aware of the, the uh, security that was implemented for the application and its configuration. So again, maybe only authenticated users are able to even access the application itself. System security, uh, you do need to be aware, of course, the security of the overall system, the server itself. Uh, again, things like physical location, who can actually get to the server. And then, of course, if they can get to the server, then the databases themselves uh, reside within data files, as do the log files. So they are they're really just files on the server. So we need to be aware of where those data files, where the log files, and where any application files are residing. And then, of course, what are the permissions on those files? Because somebody could be able to gain access to just the files. Maybe they don't have an account within MySQL or anything like that. But if they get the files, maybe they're going to be able to implement those on different servers and be able to bypass the security in some way. So you certainly need to be aware uh, of where the files reside and what the security settings are on just those individual files as well. And then within the database, we we certainly have to make sure that we have the proper security settings within the database. So all of the objects within them, we need to make sure that the correct user access is there, that the correct users are accessing the correct databases, and then within those databases, access to the appropriate views or tables, and then of course, stored procedures as well. All of the objects that you implement within a database need to be secured because they can all access data in one way or another. And finally, of course, network security. Uh, you can have MySQL restrictions within the networking environment that can give you access only to the local host. In other words, this server is not able to communicate with that server or you can define a set of other hosts wherein you know maybe you do have a couple of servers that need to interact with each other uh, but from that point again you can also set up the clients can this client access that server yes or no uh, and then you can say yes this one should be able to no that one should not be able to or again you can designate any kind of set of hosts that you are allowed to gain access to but you're simply saying here are the servers that you're able to connect to, uh, either only the local one or a set of hosts. So as you can see, there's a number of considerations. Now in some upcoming demonstrations, we'll see some implementations of security features, but it's a, it's a bit of an ongoing struggle to say the least to ensure that the security is there. And there are so many layers that it can take a while to get a handle on everything, but uh, always consider that there are there, as soon as somebody comes up with a way to secure something, somebody is out there trying to figure out a way to circumvent it. So you always need to, to keep on top of your security.